In this video, I'm going to go through the process of creating a new checklist in MirrorCheck. I'm on the MirrorCheck website and I'm going to just log into my account. And in the last video, we created a test account. I'm just going to log in. And from my checklists, we don't have any checklists yet. Let's go add one first, just so we have one in our My Checklist. I'm going to add the Markdown Magic. So we've added one to My Checklists, and we could check out that one. That's a very simple checklist, just showing a bunch of capabilities of the editor. I'm going to go back to My Checklists, and we're going to now create a new checklist. So in mirror check, there is the idea of what we call lists. So add list, add section, and add item. And how that shows in the mobile app, I've got my mobile app over here on the right, is if I pull up the sample, I can show this. So these tabs at the bottom, pre-flight, in-flight, pre-landing, those are what we call lists. And then you can have one-to-many lists, and then in a list, so if we're in the pre-flight list, you see there's these columns, and they can either be vertical or horizontal. These are horizontal columns. And initial, exterior, summary, interior, those are our sections, and then within a section, you have one-to-many items. Are you ready to start weather and density altitude? So the way it flows in the editor is, again, if we add a list, it gives us, because each list needs at least one section, and each section needs e at least one item, so it gives us all of those all at once when we add a list. And we would call this, if we were creating an airplane one, pre-flight. And then maybe our section is called initial. And for our first item, are you ready to start? We can do the same thing here. And for every item, you can have a label one and a label two. It's typically a challenge and response, but it's you can just have two separate labels there. You can add detailed comments. When you click that, you get a very advanced, rich text editor to add detailed comments. And you access those if I'm over in the mobile app and I press and hold weather density altitude, you see there's a little note in the top right, a comment there. Press and hold, it then slides up and gives you all that rich content and you just click back to go back. So that's where you'd add comments. Mandatory, if I check that, that says I must complete this item before I can move on. So all other items will be disabled until I click that first item and that's how that one was set up as well and there's a bunch of other advanced options and we'll get to those in a little bit but so we've got our pre-flight we got our initial we got our first item and we're gonna give this checklist a name my first airplane and I'm gonna hit save so we've saved our checklist so far in the cloud. We're going to go over to the mobile app. I keep clicking on it, but I have to go over to my iPad here. So on my iPad, I'm basically clicking this quick sync button on the menu. And what that does is it syncs what's ever up in the cloud. And you see it immediately refreshed my checklists. And I have that Markdown Magic checklist that we got. And there's my first airplane. We see a little question mark by that. That just means we didn't set a type for that. 
and we'll see that if we come back over to the editor this genre miscellaneous so if I go and make that aviation and then hit save again and hit quick sync again now you see my first airplane just changed into an airplane as well so if I click that checklist now there's our checklist so far so we have our pre-flight we have our initial section and we have our are, ready, are you ready to start item so let's add another item <coughs> so let's say weather check and hit save quick sync so if I already have the checklist loaded, you see that it asks me, checklists have been successfully synced. Do you want to reset the open checklist? So the open checklist, you're currently in a checklist session, and it doesn't just immediately blow that away because you may have been in the middle of having a bunch of things checked, and it doesn't want to just destroy that. So it gives you the option. If you're in edit mode like this, then you typically want to say yes here. I want to see my new content for that checklist. So we're going to hit yes. And you see there's are you ready to start? And there's weather check, which is now you can't click on that. It's disabled until you click that first item. And now it enables once we click that. So that is one section if we were going to add more sections we'd then go to this add section and you can highlight if you click on the list and click it it's going to add it as the last section but if you click on the section it's going to add it right after that section so that lets you insert sections where you want to and you can always use these arrows to move them up and down quickly as well so Let's add another section, and we'll call that interior. So in our interior, maybe we're going to check the mass, turn the master switch on. So master switch on, and we'd add a bunch more items, obviously, and then we hit save. Do our quick sync. Yes. And now you see we have our two columns here. We have our initial and then our interior. And then we could just keep building up content like that. And same thing, we could add another tab basically at the bottom with more sections, more items. <clears throat> so let's now dive in more detail to an item. So if we go to this weather check and we go to advance, just to see some of the options. So you could set an item as label only, and that basically says we don't even want a checkbox there. Maybe this is a note or something. So let's add another item, and we're going to call this warning. And maybe we had some content for the warning that we wanted to inline right there in the checklist so then we can say label only we can set a background color for that I'll use this pinkish color and then you can also set whatever label one is you can change its color if you wanted to or label two label audio override sometimes with text-to-speech it basically Siri or whoever the voice is tries to read it 
using lookups, dictionaries, this and that. And a lot of times it gets it very good and it's come a long way. But every once in a while, you may want to more pronunciate, pronounce exactly what you should be saying. So these audio overrides allow you to put in exact phonetic type stuff so you can have things exactly as you'd want. So it could even say something completely different than you see on the screen. So label one and label two can show you things on the screen. In the audio override, she could be saying something more detailed, less detailed, and that's what those are. Print overrides are very similar, but it's when you print out your checklist. Sometimes you want the content more concise on your printed checklist compared to what you're going to show on your iPad, and you can override content as well like that. So those are some of the more advanced options there. Comments, you can do a lot with the comments. So weather check, add comments, everything you can do in a web page, basically, you can do with comments here with images and tables and all sorts of content that you could put in there. So say we were going to put a little table in there. So heading... Or maybe VX. Y. So we just created a little table. So I'm going to save all this. And we're going to go back in Quick Sync. And now you'll see some things. So you see, are you ready to start? Now you see we have our comment there. And if I hold that, there's that table we just created. And you see our inline content. In mirror check, we still want you to acknowledge that. So you basically just tap on it to move on. And then you see mirror check automatically takes you to the next list. Right now, there's no name for that list. We haven't put a name in there yet, so it's empty down there. But let's go do that real quick. So maybe that was going to be in flight. And before takeoff, maybe. Blah, blah, blah. So hit save, one more quick sync. And now you see we've got our in-flight tab down there that you can immediately just jump to, jump back to pre-flight. So that's a good overview, I think, of the basics of the editor and how to get started to creating your first checklist. Go check it out.